the GTX 750 Ti and the GT 1030. A lot of you new budget gamers are currently debating about one of these two cards. So today we're gonna compare them by benchmarking 10 games. Also don't forget about our December month of giveaways, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the GTX 750 Ti and the GT 1030 to hopefully help you if you're debating about one of these two cards. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before getting into the video, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding, they don't waste time with the filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes including UX design and QA testing, and most importantly all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. Alright so for comparison, let's first talk about price. Now I can only vouch for the current prices here in the United States, but the GTX 750 Ti is usually going on the used market for around 50 to 70 US dollars and the GT 1030 is usually going on the new market for around 70 to 80 dollars. Now for some of you the pure fact that the GTX 750 Ti is a bit cheaper might be enough for you already but let me remind you used deal hunters that there are still a ton of people out there most actually that prefer to buy new instead of used. Buying new hardware ensures that your part is working right out of the box. Yes there's obviously some exceptions sometimes. You also get a warranty in case if there are any issues and you don't have to worry about tracking down a deal, haggling, or anything like that. There's also some benefits that the GT 1030 has over the GTX 750 Ti that doesn't involve frames per second. The 1030 consumes way less power than the 750 Ti, it produces less heat, and since it's a newer product that means it'll be supported by Nvidia longer than a previous generation card. With all that out of the way though, the number one data point in this comparison is the benchmarks, and the Dell Optiplex has finally made a return to the channel. There's a ton of videos to catch up on for those of you that just subscribed, and I feel like this is a great testing platform today because this is a computer that you would actually pair with one of these cards. This Dell Optiplex is rocking an Intel i5 3470 clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 500 watt EVGA power supply which is more than enough for these cards, and finally the games are installed on a Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM hard drive. The specific GT1030 that we're testing today is the 2 gigabyte MSI model which has a base clock of 1265 megahertz and a boost clock of 1518 megahertz. The GTX 750 Ti that we're testing today is the 2 gigabyte Zotac model which is rocking a base clock of 1033 megahertz and a boost clock of 1111 megahertz. One more thing to note is that I decided to benchmark all of these games in 1080p but I would personally play these games at least the higher end titles in 720p with both of these cards so just know that you can always drop the resolution for higher FPS. The first game up was Fortnite like I do in every single benchmarking video and here in 1080p with low settings and the resolution scale at 100% both of these cards managed to get above 100 FPS with the 750 Ti doing about 22% better than the 1030. Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and in 1080p and very low settings, the 750 Ti managed to get an impressive 62 FPS average, while the 1030 could only get up to 42. Counter-Strike Global Offensive followed. This test was done in deathmatch mode, by the way, not the new Battle Royale, and in 1080p and low settings with no anti-aliasing, both of these cards got some pretty impressive results with the 750 Ti just beating the 1030 by about 6%. Rocket League was up next, and in 1080p with quality settings, the 750 Ti actually blew past the 1030 in this one by a 55% margin which was pretty crazy. This was tested during an online match so there could have been a few additional factors in there FYI. My most dreaded game to benchmark, Dota 2 was up next. This one was against the bots by the way because I have no idea how to play this game. And here in 1080p and medium settings, both of these cards got just above that 100 FPS mark with the 750 Ti leading by about 5%. Rainbow Six Siege followed and with the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and low settings, the 750 Ti 
Sky averaged an impressive 86 FPS and the GT 1030 was no slouch either scoring a 72 FPS average. Getting into the newer and tougher to run games, Battlefield 5 followed up next. Make sure you check out my Battlefield 5 benchmarking video with budget graphics cards by the way. In here in 1080p and low settings, the 750 Ti beat the 1030 by about 14%. This one you probably want to play in 720p for both these cards though. Monster Hunter World was up next and in 1080p and low settings, these cards actually performed about the same which was right around that 41 to 44 FPS mark. Moving on, I tested these cards with the Far Cry 5 built-in benchmarking tool. This one is always challenging to run on lower end cards and in 1080p with low settings, both of these cards prove that you probably want to play this game in 720p. And finally, for the toughest benchmark of them all, Assassin's Creed Odyssey was up last and once again, this test proved that you probably want to play this game in 720p for both cards, but the 750 Ti did beat the 1030 once again by about 33%. So there you have it. As you can see, the GTX 750 Ti is outperforming the 1030 still in every single game, sometimes by a couple percentage points, but sometimes by quite a good amount. I know a lot of you probably already knew what the results of these benchmarks would be. These cards have been out for quite a while now, but just remember that there's always more factors to keep in mind other than just pure FPS numbers. With all that out of the way though, it's now time for our December month of giveaways. And for today's giveaway, the company Shadow is giving away three of you lucky winners a one month free trial to their Shadow streaming service. I fully reviewed it up here, by the way. And this is just so awesome of them to do this. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is drop a comment down below saying that you want the free trial, but you have to be in one of the states that it's eligible for, so please don't comment if you don't live there. Well, that wraps up my comparison video of the GTX 750 Ti and the GT 1030. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit the subscribe button because next week we have yet another week of baller giveaways. You don't wanna miss those videos.